before india if you look at the historically and it's an agriculture country you know the 80% of the people are 70 to 80% of people is to live in rural india now the pattern is changing and urban city urban population is increasing and more our even our economic policies are more urban oriented economy is been happening and lot of infrastructure is been developed all the young, uh, employment opportunities are created in urban cities so all those traditional crafts people have become you know no options in the, they they finding it very difficult to survive in their local situation so they are also migrating to the urban cities and working as a laborers and they are coming in living in a urban situation and if you look at their living condition is such a pathetic they don't have drinking water they don't have sanitation they don't have proper sleeping places they have to sleep night uh, sleepless nights during the rainy season winter season and absolutely no security no social security for them and we have spoken with hundreds of children who walked into this institution here in the institution as well as in the field outreach programs and 90% of the children have expressed the problem of alcohol with their within the family and i can give you the number of examples how the children gone through such a hardship because of the the father or become alcoholic we do work with a large number of women and we do have many federations uh, women's federation we i think almost about 15000 women we work and the main component there is violence and it's because of alcoholism uh, a large number of women have come for help because their husbands are abusing them or abusing the children and uh, not enough income is all the income is spent on alcoholism it is very generally stated now the man's earning in the slum or in the homeless community goes for alcoholism namma amma aaru jana makkulu er jana thira hogibittru makkulu namma naalak jana ke maara hogibittru kaasike ella bangla kelsa ke maadi kashta kashta kaas thagondu kudiyadu avru avasthi hogibittu namma appa ge na maadidru aasti beku anta ಅದರಿಂದ ನಾನು ನಮಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಕೈ ಒಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇಡೋದು ಬೆಂಕಿ ಹಚ್ಚೋದು ಸೀಮನೆ ಈ ಥರ ಎಲ್ಲ ನನಗೆ ಕೆಲಸ ಕಷ್ಟ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಅದರಿಂದ ನಾನು ಓಡಿ ಬಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ದೂರ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ದೂರ ನಾನು ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ವೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಈ ಬೀಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಈ ಬೀಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಸ್ and it's 99% of the children who are on the street narrated this examples you know that uh, alcohol is a one of the reason you know they uh, they have come on to the street bandha tande kayirinda illande tande chandagilla thai chandagilla avaru thira vedre yena na kashta irthe adinda band bidbodu illande odiyodanadu illande bayyodanadu ha ಕೈ ಕಳಲ್ಲ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿತ್ತು ಅವನು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವರೆಲ್ಲ ಆಸ್ಪತ್ರೆ ಕರ್ಕೊಂಡು though the child might say that my parents are abusive i think that you need to look beyond that why why are their parents abusive is it because of poverty is it because of alcoholism is it because of lack of employment is it because of lack of minimum wages is it because of abuse in the family is it because of violence i think the child might say it's because of my abusive parents i'm on the street but i think a lot of other con- uh, other concepts are connected to it for example men majority of them do come from real utter poverty and also alcoholism
If you see Bangalore in the evening, I, you won't be very surprised. It's not very different from what you see back home. Bangalore, absolutely, the way they dress, the way they walk, the way the money flows, you will not see much different from what you see in the European countries or the other countries. I think the policy of alcohol policy in India and the, I think the alcohol lobby, especially the foreign alcohol industry, that industry lobby is very powerful. Even official statistics, if you look at the Karnataka, they are earning the excise uh, uh, income. The Karnataka government is getting nearly 400 crores a year annual income is. And uh, so that is a very important, uh, it, it plays a very major role you know but uh, in the in the state economy and definitely they have uh, control over and they can dictate terms to the state they influence the state in making the policies in favorable to the alcohol industry and it has been happening The dream school specially caters to the children who are not in the mainstream of education. Uh, those who have been deprived of right to education because of the family reasons or economic reasons or various other reasons, they not even had an opportunity to enter into the mainstream of education. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a bridge school. You know, we take all the different kinds of backgrounds of children who are child laborers, who are street children, children who are run away from homes, children who are school dropouts, children who have been neglected, care and, care and affection. So all these children have been coming to this institution. My name is Manjula and Ottara NSLP. I am Manali. I am Manali. ला <laughs> What happens to the girl child on the street is always uh, something amazing. You don't know what's happening. After a certain time, they just disappear. And we have very strongly feel that they are lured into prostitution, sex work. Let me take you on a journey into my life. Is my club. I don't own the place, but I might as well, because here I'm king of the hill. I love this place. It's laid back, relaxed, easy going, just like my club. Brewed longer, brewed slower, great tasting, easy drinking. Here I can be myself, show my true colors. This is my life. This is my club, my beer. <laughs> Alcohol is one of the serious problems which has been identified in Uganda. And actually when you look at um, the causes of poverty in Uganda, you'll find alcohol is number five among the major causes of poverty. Uganda was um, in 2005 listed the first country which had the highest per capita alcohol consumption. You see, the, the moment the statistics came out in the newspapers, the alcohol industry knew somebody was going to attack them. Somebody was going to say, look here, look the damage you are causing. Look here, look see the problem you are causing to the families. They came in very fast. Because by then, um, the, the, the ministry had started a committee. Because there is little money towards mental health and alcohol problems, which has been committed by government. When the committee began sitting, there came a shortage of funding. 
the alcohol industry, especially the Uganda breweries, said we can assist you to do this, we can assist you to bring an expert, because they have been manipulating the system, they have been denying information. That's how they bring the man on board. They say he's an expert. Interestingly, when you follow what, up, what he has been doing in the East and Southern African region, the same. He's been the same man going around, compromising, and, and, and nobody has stood up to say no. So what do we get? We get a very compromised draft policy on alcohol. So this is worrying us, and we are calling for a ban. We are about to write a letter to the Minister of Essex. We are about to write a letter to the, to the President. And this is being smuggled in schools. We are being told that students smuggle boxes and boxes of what? Of alcohol. Drivers, a lot of accidents. Buses have caused in accidents. And drivers are seen drinking. What they do, they put the alcohol here. They drink a bit and they put it back. Jim, Beckham. You see Beckham, the famous yeah. prayer? I wonder whether he gave them permission yeah. to put on his name. I, I'm, I'm doubtful. And, and, and this is the problem we have here. This must be banned. In Kenya, it was banned. In Tanzania, it was banned. Congo said, we don't want Uganda wallage of this type. Wallage must be sold in a bottle. Wallage must not be sold like this. You look at that policy, you cry. The policy is not helping Ugandans overcome the alcohol problem. The ones in the world, you hear adverts in the media. But the messages they are giving out, they are not helping young people. Their target is to expand market, their target is to increase consumption, and they don't mind about the effects. They don't talk about the effects. Laid back, relaxed, easy going. Just like my club, brewed longer, brewed slower, great tasting, easy drinking. Here, I can be myself, show my true colors. This is my life. This is my club, my beer. I was born in the slum. I grew up in the slum. And we, I have used alcohol before, but somehow I realized I was going the wrong way. But around us, I used alcohol because around us it was exposed. Drugs are there and alcohol is there. Everything is cheaply available. Some drugs are expensive, but the young people manage to, to get them. Now, the main thing is, in the slums, we don't have these higher class bars. People have, are using their same rooms. The, the rooms that they sleep in are the rooms that turn into a bar at night. When it comes to the evening from around four, the, the, the people are coming in, the buyers, and they start drinking, they start smoking, they, they are there shouting for the whole village and so on. If someone who has children, the children are going to be, are the one to be affected. They can't sleep. Maybe tomorrow morning they have to go to school. When it comes to uh, uh, the, the, the family, the relationship, of uh, the mother and the father, they are, there is a lot of divorce. They are end up divorcing because of uh, the quarrels between these two. The husband go out to drink, and they spend all the income that they have. You see, so he, he or she earns like maybe sixty thousand in uh, at the end of the month, and before even he reaches home, the money is. Everything is, has been spent. These are some of the problems that are coming up. There is a lot of fighting. There is a lot of immoralities, such as defiling young girls, raping women, and so on. And uh, funny enough, the young girls are, are, who are in relationship, especially those who have been forced to marry, they are treated like uh, a source of income. So a boyfriend will go out there, try to, to, to talk maybe to a fellow friend, provides a, 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 her, her wife for sex for a night because he wants money to go and drink. 
or buy uh, buy buy drugs. So people actually sell their own wives. They sell their own wives because they need money. Uh, this is mainly among in the youth, among the youth. You see, so this is what is happening. <laughs>